Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today's video is inserting the spine into cover into the cover of this journal, the six by six Tim Holtz paper pad scrap buster idea book journal. And this is my fifth attempt at this. I've had trouble after trouble um, with the videos and taking long and on on and on. But hopefully this will work. All right. We're making a spine a little bit different than what I originally made. And what I did originally is I used an accordion spine. And I'd forgotten why I don't love accordion spines. And my reason is this. Uh, let's see, I think it was one of these pages that didn't do it. What happens is if you don't anchor each section, the sections can pull out. And uh, I'm sure there's probably ways around it, but I don't know them. So what I ended up having to do after making the accordion I had to go in and make a pamphlet stitch. I did the five hole pamphlet stitch afterwards. And I'll show you both sewing in our signature and using a pamphlet stitch. But I'm not gonna use the accordion binding just because I've forgotten how much I don't love it. Now there are other binding systems that are really popular. Um, let's see, they've been around for a long time. The Stack the Deck is a Laura Dennison from following the paper trail system. And it's the same idea, but the spines are a little bit wider. And The Hidden Hinge by Kathy Orta at Paper Phenomenon. Those are two that have been around for a long time that I'm aware of. But what I'm gonna do here, sorry about the chair. What I'm gonna do is show you, well, these are some of the samples that I made in the other videos. I am using a sewn hinge spine. And oh, I haven't heated it yet, but um, to get rid of that dark mark. But I did this because I wanted them spaced far enough apart to be wide. I think the other two systems, the um, Hidden Hinge and Stack the Deck were designed for scrapbook pages, so they're made to be thicker. And mine are thicker than a traditional journal, which is why I wanted more space in the spine, but they're not as thick as a traditional scrapbook. So I kind of com combined the two. One of the samples I made had them spaced every 16th of an inch, and that was just really difficult to sew. So I changed it and did them every eighth of an inch. Now, if when I made, uh, I think it's cover part two, I said, oh, two and a quarter, two and a half. Well, I remembered now why I wanted it two and a quarter, not two and a half, because I had 16 pages, so eight signatures. If two pages make one signature, you needed two and a quarter inches so that it's spaced correctly. Well, I made these two and a half, so I had to put in an extra signature. So mine now have nine signatures rather than eight. And for the new folks, the signature is just your bundle of pages. Most of the time, your bundle is more than two pages. It's, you know, four to six pages, depending on, and some people even put up to 10 if they're really flat. But because I know this is going to be a really bulky book, I wanted to just put one signature per section. Now, if your pages are thinner, you can put two signatures per section, and then you wouldn't have to have as wide of a, a binding, and you wouldn't have to sew them in as often. But for the sake of this book, I apologize. If you haven't made your spine yet, make it two and a quarter, because that'll fit the eight or 16 pages. But if you have already made it like I did, make yourself an extra set of two six by six pages, and an extra set of the hinges, which I'll show you next, um, because you'll need them. To, to fit it correctly. All right, uh, I guess, um, hmm, gosh, I've done this so many times now, I don't remember which order I did. Um, I think what I'll do is do all the, the hinges first. And um, what I do to make the hinges is I got some muslin. I think this was in a yard sale bag. These were shorts before I started. Uh, they were in a bag with some other things that just happened to be there, but I got some muslin and you can see this one's already been cut. Uh, sorry, muslin and I ironed it. Now I know a lot of people don't like to iron, but this step you really kind of do have to iron it because you want it flat so that you know the exact dimension that you need for, you know, the exact dimension you need for your, uh, let's see, I'll use this section for your hinges. You want your, your, the strips, I guess is a better way to put it. You want your strips exactly half an inch. Well, I guess that's not true. You could make it thinner or fatter if you wanted to, but for, 
my book, I want this bin in the hinges, excuse me, it's early still. I want the hinges to be at a half inch. And I am using my glass cutting mat. Now, I don't highly recommend that because the glass stays hot, but for the sake of the video, that's what I'm doing and it does work. So just make sure that you don't use your cutting mat because it's not designed to um, hold the heat. All right, so I've got my muslin ironed. I, it doesn't have to be muslin. I suppose it could be cotton or linen or any non-polyester type fabric because um, if I remember correctly, the adhesive does not stick well to polyester. All right, and then you want to cut with, I generally do to get it, I put it straight first and then I'll do a simple trim or I'll just trim off the, the some of the wonky edges. I don't trim them all off, but I want it mostly straight just because it makes it easier when I'm cutting, um, when I lay these down. Um, so I'm gonna trim that off. And I generally have two rotary cutters, one for paper, one for fabric. And because I teach alliteration and um, figurative language, I generally do the purple is for the paper and the, the yellow is for my fabric. But purple paper is how I remember which trimmer goes to which. So I'm just cutting off the excess edges so that I've got some straight lines to work with. And then I want my sections at least six inches, or I want them six inches long, and this is at least six inches. So after I've trimmed two sides down, you can use your glass. No, you don't want to use your glass. You can use your ruler or your cutting mat. And this particular ruler is, what brand is this one? This one's a Creative Grids, and I really like it because it's got kind of like a, I don't know, a rough spot and a little circles on the back, but I can still see through it, and it's one inch, and these strips are one inch. So I'll lay, I don't even look at the grid on the back for the most part on this one. I use my ruler and I lay it down, and I'll cut it in strips. And you'll need, if you did a two and a quarter inch spine, you'll need 16 of these. If you did a two and a half inch spine, you'll need 18. Okay, so I'll just roll it down and cut, cut, cut my strips until it's done. You don't wanna watch me cut the whole thing. All right, then I'll come and make these six inches long. So, I have to use the numbers here because like I said, it's early and I don't want to cut them too short. All right, so that'll be to seven. And I'm sure there's people, quilters, that have really great tips and tricks with this and doing it just right. But for the sake of my project, I it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be close enough because I want these ratty and a little bit um, jagged and that kind of a thing. So I, I don't mind so much if they're not 100% perfect. If one's a, a smidge longer for quilting, my understanding is you have to get it perfect. It's probably why I don't quilt because I don't do much of anything perfectly. Okay. And I'm just gonna continue with these four and then I'll cut them to the six inches. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my adhesive. Now I sew mine on, but you don't have to sew them on. And I get, uh, let's see, there's, sorry, I'm grabbing them over here. Heat and bond in Wonder Under. And to be honest, this morning, sorry, I dropped something. This morning I used heat and bond um, for my the sample again today. And I've never had it not stick before, but I put the heat and bond on and it didn't stick. I mean, it stuck to the fabric just fine, but it didn't stick to the paper. Now, I don't know if there's a glassy coating on the paper or if I, I, I did something wrong, but for the first time, I didn't get, here, let me cut this down a little bit. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it was just this morning, I don't know, but I'm just gonna rough cut it and see. Maybe there's this, this uh, Tim Holtz paper. And you know what, I forgot to start with that, darn it. I had it all well and done correctly the first several times. One of the videos, I hit a button on my recording and it did something in slow motion. So unbeknownst to me, it ended up being five and a half hours. And then I couldn't figure out why it was taking so long to load. Well, that's because the video was five and a half hours and I was talking at a super snail pace. So this morning when I did this, I 
couldn't get it to stick. Well, this one's sticking. I don't know. Maybe the paper was it just, it's not a super great. See, here you go. This is a heat and bond. It's just an okay stick. This And usually it sticks really well. It's the first time I've had it work that way. All right, back to what I was saying. Um, heat and bond light. Because I sew on it, you want to make sure it's sewable. It's got machine safety on it because like here, sewable, fusible, machine safe. I use Wonder Under most of the time. Heat and bond works. You don't want this one, and I'll tell you why in just a second. But a lightweight, it holds your fabric, and it holds your paper. I've never had a problem with it. Now, if you're not using cotton, it may not hold as well. I know it won't hold well. I don't, shouldn't say I know. It didn't used to hold polyester a long, long time ago when I started doing this, and so now I only use um, cotton. But, um, so, one of these two. Now, it also comes in these cool rolls, but you want to be able to, you don't want to have... With this, you have to press both sides at once. With this, you don't because you've got a paper here. So I can iron these on my little strips, which is what I want. And then I can peel it back and put my paper on top. If I use this kind, which is why I don't recommend it, I have to have my whole thing assembled. So I would have to have this line here, and then I would have to have the adhesive here, okay? And then I would have to get uh, couple strips of paper and lay it all in and trust that it's all going to stay still and not wiggle. Well, the adhesive wiggles a lot. So this one, it can be done certainly, but it's a lot more challenging. So I don't recommend it for this particular project. All right. That means I'm going to step back one and do what I should have done in the first place and show you what paper I'm using. I told you that I would be using the six by six paper and I am. This is the French industrial sec collection, but it doesn't really matter which collection. I think I use memoranda and the others. I believe all of Tim Holtz papers come with the option with them, this formation where you have four six by six sheets. And so I think most of them have at least three different sets in each pack. So if you've got 16 pages, no, try that again. If you've got 16 sides, you need four sheets. If you're gonna have eight signatures, you need four sheets of paper because you can get two per page. Or you can do what I did, and I used three of those sheets of paper, and then I used um, a sheet of cardstock, I used a file folder, and I'll show you something on that, I'm glad I opened this up, and I used some braille paper. And then I used that extra signature that I made with craft paper. <clears throat> so I used three sheets of that 12 by 12 paper cut into six by six, and then some random bits, but you can use all of it from that, that paper line if you want. It's completely up to you. I just wanted a little bit of variation. Now, before you start sewing, if you're gonna sew on the glass mat like I did, make sure you don't have any glue on your mat because what will happen is you'll pick up, the iron and the heat will pick up anything. Now I'll cover this so it's not a big deal, but just to give you a heads up so you don't make the same mistake I did. If you've got any adhesive at all on your glass mat, your glue, the iron and the transfer will pick it up and it'll get on your paper or your fabric. So be aware of that. All right, so that's what I started with. That's the paper that I had cut down. These are my six by six sheets, all right? So gotta have that. Now back to the, the strips. All right, so I've cut my binding strips and now I need to cut my heat and bond or wonder under or whatever it is I'm using. And I use a different trimmer for that, but you can, you don't have to use a trimmer. You can use, you know, just a standard, um, I don't know, straight edge. You can use your paper trimmer. I believe those work as well. But I like the ease of using a rotary cutter. Now, this is kind of important. I would cut it one inch if I wanted it to go edge to edge, but I don't want mine to go edge to edge because I want these little bits to fray. It kind of goes with the look I've got with this book. If I didn't want these bits to fray, I'd cut it an inch, but I want them to fray, so I don't cut it quite an inch. I cut it at three quarters of an inch for these. Again, one inch will work, but I'm cutting it at three quarters of an inch. And I do the same thing I did before. I cut it down and then instead of cutting it six inches, which is the length of my fabric, I cut it at just shy of six. I don't know, just a little bit less than six. 
like that. And I do the same thing all the way down. All right, this goes away. Now, my next step. Here you go, these ones are done, and I, I do all of these at once as well. Let's put it up a little bit so you can see it better. I take one of the, these two have the heat and bonder, wonder render already ironed on, but this is how I do it. So I use the grid on my mat. If you've got another kind of work surface, or again, remember if you've got um, the rotary cutters, they are not heat resistant. I mean, maybe there is one that is, but I don't have a heat resistant one. So I lay my fabric strips down and I'll do this, this step all at once too. And then what did I do with the adhesive that I just cut? I just cut a piece of adhesive and I have no idea where I put it. Oh, you know what? My fan is on, I bet it went away. Darn nabbit, I bet it did. It's just because it's uh, gonna be really hot here today and I've got my fan on and I've lost my adhesive. All right, sorry about that guys. We're gonna cut one more piece of adhesive. Oh, no, here it is, in front of my face. Okay, I, it's official. For some reason, this video has fought me. This is my fifth take, or fifth time trying to do this, and it's fought me tooth and nail. Okay, I lay this down roughly in the middle, and even that's not working. Okay. All right, so I lay this down roughly in the middle, so there's a little bit of a gap on each of the four sides. And then I iron it on. And I think the directions say 10 seconds, but make sure you double check whichever kind you get. Again, this is a glass mat. It will stay hot longer. Is it perfect? No, an ironing board's probably better, but it does work. So just be really careful when you pick it up that this, this section will be hot. So if you put plastic on there or something, it, it could melt it because it is warm. I mean, it's not burning my hand, but if I left it there a while, it might. All right. I need two of these, so we're gonna pretend I've done them all. And I've got two ready to go. My next step is to get two pieces of the paper, and I just get two that I don't mind the way they look together. And that's kind of the beauty of this paper line. I don't really have to overthink it because all of these papers pretty much go together. I'm gonna use this one. All right, and then I make sure that the print is facing in the same direction and then I lay them down on top of this and I adhere them. And maybe peel off the back. And even this is fighting me today. I don't even know why. Okay. Maybe it's old. You know, it's entirely possible. I've had that stuff for a long time and maybe it has a shelf life. I have no idea. All right, this is the part where I use my grid. So I, because it's an inch, I lay it down on one of these heavy lines, just about like that. And then I get one section and I don't lay it on top of the line. I lay it close to the line. Like about that. And then I get my next section and I, and I lay it on just the other side of that line. And that reason, now you can get a shim, you know, cut a piece of, um, you know, like I could use one of these guides and pretend this is like a uh, poster board or chipboard or something. And I could lay it in between to make sure that my spines are exactly evenly spaced, but I don't. I, for this, because I want it kind of not perfect, I don't mind so much. So I lay the two on top of each other and then I get my purple tape, sorry for the arm wrench because they wiggle. As soon as you put the iron on, the darn things move. So I'll put my purple tape down to hold my paper in place while I'm ironing, and then I just put the iron down. Now I know some people move it back and forth, and I tend to do that too, but my understanding of the directions is you're supposed to put it in place for about 10 seconds or so. And then we're gonna call that 10 seconds. See, and it didn't stick. I do have to press it down a little bit, push a little bit harder. You know what? Maybe this isn't perfectly level, and that's why it's not sticking. All right, so that gets it here down. Then I take my second strip, and I again use the same grid that I used before, right? I use the same grid, and I lay it right on top until it's mostly straight. So I'm basically making a sandwich. 
the strips are the bread and the paper is the lunch meat or the peanut butter and jelly or whatever you like. And I ironed this down as well. Oh, I think that was, the, I don't know which one that was. I don't even know. If I, it was the heat and bond or the wonder under, because I tried to use both. All right, then my signature is done. Now remember, this is a two page signature. So if you choose not to sew, then you're ready to go. I mean, if you're not sewing with a sewing machine, I sew mine with a sewing machine simply because I like the way it looks. And um, I do this for all 16 pages, or in this case, 18 pages, because I did a two and a half inch spine. And then this is how I'm gonna sew it in. Now you'll notice that there's like a hill and a valley, right? Just because of the way it's ironed. I am going to draw, I'm gonna trip this cool off a little bit. I'm gonna move my camera over just a smidge because that area is still hot. The next step I do after I've got all of these done is I get my friction pen. Now this is what I use, F-R-I-X-I-O-N. It's because it's this really cool pen that it says it's erasable and it has a little eraser, but you erase it with heat. You can use your iron, you can use your heat tool, you can use your hair dryer. All of it makes the um, ink go away. So it's, it's rather cool. I don't know if it has a life like these, the ones that I did over there um, earlier, the samples that I showed you. Well, you can see they still have the ink where I used to sew it. Well, let's just find out. They normally use a hair dryer at this point. Oh yeah, this has been well, almost a week and it's coming right up. So you can use your iron or your hair dryer or whatever. And the ink apparently works. Here you go, you can see it again. Okay, that's kind of fun. Make that black ink go away. So just an FYI, the black ink doesn't stay. All right, so you can see there it is. Well, maybe you can see there. It is completely gone. All right, but this area of my table is a little hot. And since this is heat sensitive, if I try to use a heat sensitive pen on a hot surface, it's not going to show so good. So I've got all 16 of these done. That one's the one that's not sewn. I've got all of these done. I keep saying 16, but it's 16 pages if you didn't goof and do two and a half inches like I did, and then it's 18 pages. So in the valley, I will take my ruler and line them up again so that my valley lines, here, let's move over a little bit. My valley lines up with my center line here. And again, purple tape. I just moved it, I would have left it on, but um, because I wanna hold it still while I'm making these lines, I'm taping it down. So I want the center of my signature to line up with this line. And then I'll use my straight edge and put a line. Because when I sew these in, whether I'm using the pamphlet stitch or the sewing machine, it is a lot easier to see that dark line. And it's a lot easier to match it up with the grid lines I'm going to make. And that's the next step. So I'll show you that. All right, you do this with all of your pages. You make your line. Then we finally get to come to the cover, the cover spine. Now, this is the inside of my cover sign. I made the others in black. And because I only have a black friction pen, but I believe they come in other colors, because I only have black, I did the, the newest sample, it's just for a sample only, in um, off-white so you could see it a little bit better. But you'll notice here, this is the solid black, and so is the other one. Oh no, this is the book that I'm done. Hori. Okay, here you go. See, the one that we're gonna sew in, this is black. Because this is the inside, these two flaps are my handles that I'm going to adhere to the cover, and this is the sewn edge. So, the naked part, which we're going to cover with fabric on, gosh, I guess that'll have to be after I got back from Texas, because I was supposed to do this Tuesday and then the next video Wednesday, but because I couldn't, what happened is, basically, I did the video on Tuesday night when I got back from watching Breck, and I kept making mistake after mistake, so I stopped. I went and did it Wednesday morning. I did the video, it took 45 minutes, I guess it was about how long it was, almost an hour maybe. And it took forever to prepare video because I have to turn it sideways. And so while it was doing that, I started taking apart my cave because I wanted to make some, some changes. I wanted to add another shelf and such. 
And then when the video was finally prepared, I tried to upload it and it was five and a half hours. So my cave was all torn apart. I couldn't make another video then. And it wasn't loading. It was wrong and it drag, drug on forever and ever. So then I cleaned up my cave enough to do another video and I did another video because the next step is putting the whole thing together is was the video I was going to show you Wednesday. So this, I'll have to finish finish this when I get back from Texas and that won't be until I think the, the 1st of July. So I am sorry, I didn't intend to make it work this way but sometimes life happens like that. Because when the cave was all torn apart, I couldn't even get to here to, to um, show you the video or sh film the video. So anyway, it's coming. My whole point is it's coming. Okay, gosh, I rambled on a lot there. Sorry about that. Now you wanna make sure that you've got your creases in your spine because you, you are using that as your guideline. And then what I do is I'll measure a quarter of an inch all the way across. And the way I do that is I'll lay it here and again with my wonderful purple tape so that I'm sure it's straight. It's still a little hot there, so I'm gonna move over. I'll use the crease and the crease to make sure they're straight. And I will lay it down again. See, it moved just a little bit when I was taping it. All right. Now I will make, use my friction heat pen and make grid lines I start in one quarter inch, so here's my curve or my crease where the cover is going to attach. And then I'll move in a quarter of an inch and I use the long lines on my paper. I could use the lines on my ruler, I suppose, or, but on my paper, on my work surface as my guide. And then I draw a line every quarter of an inch. And that's where I made the mistake. And it should have been two and a quarter because that would have given us eight lines, but I made it two and a half and it made it nine lines, which is why we needed the extra signature. All right. Yeah, I've been working diligently to get my cave done so that I could film these extra videos, and I wanted it done before I went to Texas. It's mostly done, not quite done, but I do really like my signature rack, and I made a cotton frizz rack for that cool cotton frizz stuff, and just looking at it makes me happy, so I'll have to share that when I get back. All right, I'm going to do this all the way down. And these lines are important because this is how I'm going to make sure that my signatures are sewn in straight. Now remember, we made our, uh, our spine, cover spine, six and a quarter inches. And that's just so that we have a little bit of overlap each way. So I've got nine lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, if I'd done two and a quarter, it would have been just the eight lines. All right. Now we finally get to attach the darn thing. Okay, here is my signature. Here is the spine that I'm attaching it to. I match up the lines. I match up the lines. You can see at the bottom, let me zoom in just a bit for that. I used my, because this is a little bit, this is a six and a quarter and these are six inch pages. I can see exactly where my spine goes and that it's straight. I can see exactly where my spine goes and that it's straight. I'll even bring it up a little bit, see? And then I make sure it's mostly straight on here. Yeah, because I want my pages to be straight. And then I'll use my, my quilting clips and put these out at the edge to hold it in place. And now I'm gonna ask you to do a gill thing and talk amongst yourselves for a minute. I'm gonna go sew this in. When I sew this in, these are sewn, I sewed these at a regular, I don't even know, one inch or one, the, the basic plain stitch on my machine, whatever that is. I turn the machine on and this is what pops up. And that's how I sewed those. When I sew my signature, I sew it in a little bit differently. So uh, I'll go sew that and I'll show you. I'll be talk amongst yourselves for just a second. And I will, I will do that. Or you can just listen to the fan and the machine, a combination of the two. And again, I try to sew in the valley 
where the curves down and leaving it so this one so I can show you the difference. Now, normally I would say if you choose not to sew on the sewing machine, it works great. But that adhesive wasn't sticking for some reason this morning. So now I'm hesitant and I want to say, well, maybe you should sew it. But you don't have to. This also works really well with paper. You can do the same exact thing with paper and use adhesive. You can make yourself the your same strips. Um, I just happen to like the way it looks when it's sewn. All right. Now I'm extending my stitch out as long as it'll go on my machine to sew it into the signature. And I will show you that in just a second to see what I'm talking about. And I know it seems forever long, sorry about that. But I needed to sew this one to show you this. All right, take those off. And you can, well, maybe you can see, maybe you can't see it because of the heat or because of the, um, because of the light. But this stitch is much wider apart. Um, I've, I've, on every machine, sometimes it's a plus symbol. Sometimes you turn a dial to make it bigger or wider. Oh, you can see it better back here. Yeah. All right. Look how much wider that stitch is. And I do that because otherwise this acts like a perforation and it makes their pages easy to tear. Here it's far enough apart that um, it won't tear. So, sewed in my signature right here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one. So I've got my first one in and I lay it, I turn it over to the side, right? And I get my second one, I double check, make sure my pages go in the correct direction, cut my threads, sorry, cut my threads, and then I sew it right here. Now, a pamphlet stitch. You can do the same thing using the three or five hole pamphlet stitch. I, When I'm laying this in, I check to make sure that these guys are flush and that they meet and that my line's straight right here, right? because I'm lining it up with this line. I just fold my page right in half because that's the center of my line. Whoops, I probably don't want to sew that in before I draw my line, but I do want that line. It's a lot, well, here you go, I'll show you real quick. You can see without the line, you can still do it. You can still match up the center and the center. I just find it a lot easier to see that center with the line drawn. For the sake of speed here, I won't do it. All right, so you can see this center line is lined up. These pages are lined up here and here. The center is lined up there. I'll clip these pages together. Whoops, I put it on the wrong one. Aren't you glad you checked? Oh, and I'm really glad, because look at that. That would have been bad. Make sure these are folded down first. And then match up your lines. I even in frame, there we go. Match up your second line, second line. All right, and then I lift this page up a bit and put my clip. So I'm clipping the page I've already sewn in plus the new page, and I moved it. Okay, this video for some reason just does not want to get made correctly. This is the way of things, I suppose. All right, there we go. Now it's in straight, it's lined up. I just lift up this top, just this one page so that I can clip it where I want it to be. And then I'll put two more clips over here. Again, checking to make sure that it's straight and centered. And that's again where that black line really comes in handy. and I would go sew it on my machine. However, if you're brand new and, um, or even if you're not brand new, or if you've done journals for a long time and you just haven't taken the plunge, or you're just not super familiar with a pamphlet stitch, I because this is just a sample, it's not one I'm gonna actually use, I will show you how I do the pamphlet stitch. Now, everybody has a little bit different method, and usually what I do is, I don't even have any with me because I just cleaned up my cave, 
I get a piece of, well, here, I'll use, it, I'll use this just for a second as a, as a, a guide. Get a piece of cardstock, not cardstock, um, heavier weight, press chipboard or something, and I fold it in half, right? Fold it in half. Sorry, I'm off screen and I'm low. One of these days I'll get doing it correctly. And so I press it, uh, if you were a bone folder, bone folder, all right, like this, okay? Then I pre-mark my holes. This is a six inch page and I want one hole in the center. So I'll put one hole in the center. So that would be, I need to cut this down to six inches. Because I want the length of this to match my page length. So I got a piece cut it in half, need this six inches. Now it's the same size. So three inches will be the center, and I'm going to make a mark at three inches, right? And I wanna do a five hole. You can do a three hole pamphlet stitch, absolutely, but I prefer the five hole. So I'm gonna mark it at one and a quarter away from the center, and then one and a quarter again. So that would be two and a half. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So one and a quarter, and then another one and a quarter, which makes it two and a half. And then I'll have something that looks like this. And it's, again, not perfect, but, but it works. I did it quick. Then you need your pokey tool or an awl. You can use any sharp edge, really. Like I'll use it for the sake of ease. I'll use, this is a little bit bigger, I think, than an awl would be. If you're using, gosh darn it, sorry about that. I keep going down at the end of the screen. If you're using the Tim Holtz poke tool um, by Ranger, I think I've worn off my label. It's a little bit bigger, but it works for the sake of ease. The way you do it this way, if you're gonna sew it in, is you're gonna line the center up with the center, right? You've already got your page in where you want it. And I am going to hold these in place because they wiggle. And then I poke my holes. Now, some people put a book down here. Some people put um, a foam mat. There is this really cool cradle that Amy at Crafty Cat USA makes. That doesn't work as great with a hard spine like I've got here because this is made for a softer spine. Oh, actually I had it upside down. Excellent. Because if your spine bends, then you can put this in here, but my spine doesn't bend. So I won't be using that. I will use just a foam mat because that's what I've got. My clock had a melty end, so it's it's now a rectangle. All right, it still works. Lined up, I'm gonna hold my pokey tool. Let's see if I can get, there we go. I'm gonna hold my pokey tool at a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna poke. And I'm gonna do that for each of the three, uh, five dots that I made. See, it's, it's just faster to sew with a sewing machine and I like the way it looks and holds, so that's why I do it. But if you don't wanna use a sewing machine or you don't have a machine, this is an option. Be sure you take your center um, section, your guide off, because yes, I have sewn it in that way. So now I have five holes on my spine. And you wanna triple the length. So this is six inches, so this should be about 18 inches center hole poke it through now there's a whole bunch of tips and tricks as far as this you can tie a paper clip on you can do whatever i just kind of hold it on my thumb so i've gone up through the center if i wanted this string on the outside i would have started in this in the inside but because i want the string on the inside i start on the outside so i come up through the bottom try that again corey if i wanted it on the Outside, I start on the outside because I want the string on the inside. I come in on the inside. There we go. That makes sense, maybe. Come down. And then I've got my pre-poked hole and it's clamped together. So I come up through the hole to the right or the left. Okay. Now I'm still holding down with my thumb. And then I'll go through my next pre-poked hole. 
So basically I'm waving over and under. Now I come back to the other side and try not really hard. I don't know if you can see that. Try really hard not to poke through the thread. I don't want to split the thread if at all possible because that makes it hard to tighten. And I come back through the center or my second hole, okay? And then I'll go once more. Now I'm holding this tight to the side, so hopefully again, I don't split my thread. I'll go back through the center. Pull it down. I pull it snug, but not super tight. Then I'm gonna use my pre-poked hole and come up through the next hole. So I'm just weaving up and down a little dolphin, I guess. I'm dolphin stitching, that's what I'm doing. And then back down through my three poked hole, right? Okay, come be back up through this last hole and hoping against hope, can you see it? There we go. Hoping against hope that I don't go through my thread. I didn't, good. All right, and then I've got, I. You can go through that needle, uh, that hole again, and then tie it off. But I come up right next to it. I hope you can see that there. Ouch! And pull it through so that I've got it, the hole right at the center. Now this is where I tug a little bit, and see, you can see where I came up through that thread. I will tie this in a knot. So if I weren't using a sewing machine, that is how I would do it. And then I usually tie it one more time because, you know, why not? And this is just a waxed linen thread. I bought mine on Amazon. Um, there's some great sources in Europe, I believe, or the UK, but that's what I have available to me. And that is a five-fold pamphlet stitch. Now, most people put several pages in their signature, but it's really easy to do this when you've got just one signature or one set of pages in your signature. It's just a lot easier. And then you can either trim these off or put beads or what have you on there. But that, that shows you, you can do the same exact thing with um, a sewing machine or a pamphlet stitch. And that will, that will bind your book. All right, the one I'm not gonna have time to show you until I get back from Texas is how I put the cover. So I'm gonna do this super quick. My next step is I make a piece, you can use, um, I use that brushed cotton and I do the same thing. I, I cut it to fit this and just a little bit longer. See, this brushed cotton, I like cut it to fit and then I sewed so that it's just a little smidge over six and a quarter. All right, so once I've got that piece done, we're just gonna pretend that this is that piece for the sake of ease. Once I've got that piece done, well, I'll do it like this so you can see. I lay it over the edge. So I've got it sewn, I've got it ready, I've laid it over the edge, okay? What I do is I'll either use heat and bond or glue. Um, I'll use the wonder under here and just iron the whole piece right on top because I can lay this mostly flat and I can put that fabric right here and then just iron it down flat so that it stays nice and flat and is on there. All right. I'm covering the stitches that I made. Of course, you can have the stitches open if you want, but if you covered it the way we did, that would look so pretty. You could also put lace on at the end. If you've got a piece of whiter lace, you can, you can do that as well. But what I did for here is this step. Okay covered this. Then, with my covering on, okay, these are the inside pages. I will attach the inside page right here. And right on this little flap that I made, I make sure it's just on the outside edge of that flap. And I glue this down. Right? I glue, glue it down, sew it down, whatever, whichever way you want to do it. Make sure it's nice and tight. I would use a good, strong wet glue if I were going to glue it or my sewing machine if I were to sew it like that. All right. Then, because I'm, I don't have the fabric ready for this because I was going to show it in another video. So this, my spine's covered. And then I take, making sure my pages are in the correct direction. Always check your pages. 
I'll take the cover piece. Which one did I want for the cover? Did I have a preference? I don't think it mattered. And then, remember, I've got the spines covered here. So the, the edges of the spine piece are on the inside. They're in between the inside cover and the outside cover. And then I glue this down right on top. Okay, so my spine's covered and my album is now covered. I'll show this when I get back if you wanna wait, but this is essentially what I do. Actually, maybe I'll do one with lace and one with um, the cotton so I can show you both. But that's essentially how you do it. And then your pages are ready to be decorated. Now, in a perfect world and in my mind, this was all gonna be done before I went to Texas and then life happened and reality happened and such and so it's not. You can just use the previous uh, video where I show the idea book and it will show you exactly, well not exactly, it'll show you how I made the pieces and then you can just put them in the book as you choose. But I will, I will come, when I get back from Texas, I will assemble it together with you. So if you want to see what that looks like and how that looks. Otherwise, thank you very much for your patience and for watching. And I apologize for the delay. Take care and happy creating.